Hello there, and welcome into my sports talk show. I am your host, Carlation Jr., joined by a special guest today on my sports talk show, former MLB player for most of New England would know him from the 2004 World Series champion Boston Red Sox, who knocked off the Yankees and broke the curse. And also, he played for the Oakland Athletics, and he retired in 2009 with the Royals when the New York Yankees won the World Series. And now, as a, and for the past few years, he's been, he's an SN analyst. So you know Dennis, you know Dave, you know Tom, and you know Jerry. How are you doing today, Lenny? Thanks for coming back on. Hey, thanks for having me, Carl. I'm doing well. Trying to stay warm up in New England. I'm a, I'm a Florida boy. I transplanted up here about seven and a half years ago, so I'm still kind of getting used to the weather, but uh, I'm enjoying every minute of it. My first question for you is when somebody wins the World Series, my, my, my adopted aunt and I, somebody told me that, and we thought this is stupid, but I heard when somebody wins the World Series, somebody told me the whole stadium, the people that work for the stadium gets World Series rings. How true is that? That's that's a great question. I know some of the staff, some of the people that work at Fenway do get rings. I, I'm not sure if everybody gets a ring. I, I, I just don't know. But there's I, I do know that there are different grades of rings. There's the player ring, which is the top notch, top of the line ring with all the bells and whistles and whatnot. And uh, as you go down the line, I know there's a couple B and C grade rings as well that that just aren't uh quite as nice but still they uh it's an honor either way to to be a part of a red sox season whether you're a player or or a janitor and everybody in between you know it's just uh everybody plays a part and and, and uh i'm sure appreciates the rings if they do in fact get them i brought uh i've got a box here full of uh i've got a couple big league rings here and i have a few minor league rings as well if you want to see them yeah go uh, ahead. So, yeah this is 2004 right there uh let me see if this uh the lighting can change a little bit there we go is that 2004 go. that's 04 i've got 2018 right here it's a little bigger yep a little more gaudy but very nice for me since i was part of the 04 they uh i don't know if you can see that or not but they put Two trophies, one for oh, I see four, it one, now. Yeah. yeah, one for 18. And uh, very, very nice rings. And I've got a couple from when I was in the minor leagues with the Mets. Let me see. My my first year playing pro ball was playing for the Brooklyn Cyclones. Uh, so I got a Brooklyn Cyclones ring. That's uh, New York Pin League. We got co-champions that year with Williamsport, the, the last – I don't, the final game of the season was canceled because of 9-11. We were uh, staying in an apartment about 12 miles away from ground zero when that happened. So it was just pure panic, hysteria. So they they, they ended up canceling the season uh, for obvious reasons. And in 2003, I was playing for the uh, Florida State League, also in the Mets organization, the St. Lucie Mets. We got a championship ring that year. Um, I've got my old Stetson University ring right there. I think that was for, yeah, that was the Atlanta Regional back uh, in 2000. And uh, I have a AAA ring with the Oakland A's as well. I was a part of that club for a bit. And uh, it's in a drawer somewhere. I, I couldn't find it for this. I'm going to have to search. I'm going to have to search for that one. So your kids will be fighting over rings someday. You have to put a will down. That guy gets that one. That <laughs> I know. That's the thing. I, I told my wife not too long ago that uh, I've got two big league World Series rings. I've got to stick around long enough to where I get two more so they're not fighting over these things eventually. So uh, <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that. But if they don't get a World Series rings, I've got a pretty pretty nice collection of guitars that one of them or both of them will get. Uh at some and point, also you down have a nice line. World Series jersey behind you. From yeah, that's that. That's all four as well. So you know what? I've just I've accumulated a bunch of different things over the years from playing baseball and just uh, kind of being a pack rat. <laughs> I've got a bunch of just uh, stuff that they're going to get one day, and uh, hopefully they'll appreciate it as much as I do. What was your favorite moment 
of last year in 2022. Like I was down in Baltimore. You know, I go there to see the Yankees. I told a Baltimore sure. fan behind me, I said, I never thought the Red Sox would be in last place and you, you guys would be in fourth place. Yeah, last last season was rough. There wasn't a ton to talk about on the positive side. I mean, other than what was it, June? I think in June there were 20 and 6. Everything just started to roll in their favor. The pitchers were throwing strikes, the the the, the batters were were uh, getting runners getting runners on, driving them in. Uh and then it kind of went south from there. It started off a little bit in the dumps as well, but I think a lot of last season had to do with injuries. Uh, a bunch of players that contributed the year before and did really well for the Sox ended up having these nagging injuries throughout the season, and they just couldn't get the uh, the momentum rolling uh, other than that, really that one month. Uh, but uh, I think on paper, if the Sox stay healthy this year, they're going to be a, a heck of a lot better than they were last year. Um, I mean, starting with the pitching. You look at what the rotations uh, probably going to look like if Sale and Paxton are healthy, and you've got Bayo, a rookie. You got Pavetta, who was you know thirty three starts last season, a workhorse. Uh, you look at the bullpen, uh, what they've done. We have a closer now, Kinley Jansen, who's eighth on the all time list. He's second behind Kimbrel in the active all time list. Uh, he's he's been doing it well for a long, long time, and I like the fact that we have someone in a defined role at the end of the game that can go out there and shut the door if it needs to be closed. Uh, Chris Martin, uh, Rodriguez. You've got these other uh, righties and lefties in the bullpen too. They can kind of fill the gaps. Hauk's going to be going to be a, a a key player back there as well. Uh, Whitlock, I'm guessing, is going to be a starter. He's a guy that can kind of do both. Um, up the middle in the middle infield, Kike, Mar uh, Kike Hernandez and uh, Christian Arroyo, two guys that are role players throughout most of their career that are getting a shot to go out there and, and hopefully play every day. Uh, I, I know that they want to make the most of it. And I think um, athletically and, and, and baseball like you wise, these are guys, again, if they stay healthy, they can go out there and contribute and have really, really uh, career defining years. If they go out there and do their thing, like I think they can. I, I like what Alex Cora said during the media. You probably heard this. He was saying, he said to, to, to um, Zander Bogarts, if you signed with the Red Sox and the Padres offered you that amount of money, he was making a joke with the media. I would have told you you were nuts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, when when the Red Sox didn't sign Bogarts this year, I mean, Red Sox Nation was mourning because he's an iconic player. He's been with the Red Sox for a long time. He's on the team in 13, just a long time ago, right? So, uh, but if you look at both sides, he's a guy that wanted longevity, right? He wanted to go out there and get as many years as he possibly could because you never know when you're going to be done playing this game one day you're on top of the world the next day you're 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 done you know and it can be hard so the fact that he got what he wanted in 11 years with an organization out there uh in san diego with where you're gonna have great weather he's gonna have uh more of an opportunity to play longer when it's 70 degrees all year round right so good for him signing a 30 year old for 11 years if you're the red sox it doesn't make that much sense to me when you do have a, 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 an up-and-coming shortstop and marcelo meyer behind him probably a year or two away um so yeah i mean who knows if sanders going to contribute the last six seven years of his contract like he's done for the red sox for a long long time that's kind of up in the up in the air i know me the red sox everybody that are that a red sox fan wish him all the best of luck you know, he's, he's a great guy, a great player. Again, a generational player that uh, is, is probably going to do great things on the West Coast. I thought he'd go uh, – Mookie Betts was trying to get him to go to um, L.A. L.A. needed a shortstop, and I'm surprised L.A. didn't go after him. Yeah, I mean, who knows what happens behind the scenes. You know, I know these days when free agents, you know, are, are, are out there looking for teams, active players on, in different organizations are are calling them, right? They're, they're recruiting them to come to uh, – to their club you know i think that happened with uh kike hernandez and justin turner are good pals they played together in la i know kike was on the phone with him just kind of you know saying hey do you want to play together again come come to the east coast come to new england help us win a championship you run into dave bush the, the red sox pitching coach tell him his friend correlation says hi Carlation says, i will a friend i of will mine absolutely yeah, I saw him uh, during winter weekend. We we did a, a, I guess it was about a four hour show, just kind of covering different topics and talking to different players and coaches. We talked to Pete Fatsy. We talked to Dave Bush. Both great guys, very knowledgeable. They're really good at what they do. 
And uh, next time I see him, I'll absolutely tell him that you said hi. You know, what's funny about that is when the meeting, I know some Red Sox fans are fed up with what Heim Bloom did and also John Henry. They, they said, they, they said, they said, they said that when they, when John Henry and Heim Bloom was introduced, they booed him and they said, well, well, good for you guys because I, I said, I, I, I said, I knew you guys would go after them for what they did to the, um, and Red Sox fans are just like Yankees fans with they have a, they have a good memory and they don't like people that, that won't help them win. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a tough spot to be in if you're high in bloom, you know, if you think about uh, his predecessor, Dave Dombrowski, when, when Dave was here, he went out and bought a lot of players that, that contributed now, basically the then and there to, to help win the 2018 world series. And, and, and by doing that, he kind of depleted the minor league system a little bit. So you have a certain population up here saying, now we don't have the minor league system that we should have. Uh, they're complaining, but then there's a World Series. And now if you're Haim, you build the minor league system back up. You're trying to put a winning uh, club on the field uh, in the here and now as well. So again, you're going to have a certain part of the population that are just not happy that they didn't win the World Series. So either way, you're going to have a lot of people that uh that that you're not going to please right but with that said last year was just uh it was a down year it was a down year whether it's the front office or the players or just dumb luck as far as people getting injured you know i i think a lot of it most of it has to do with that you know guys just couldn't stay healthy for whatever reason um i know that they're trying to put the best product on the field possible talent wise and you can see that in the moves that they made as far as the bullpen the starting rotation the guys they've acquired offensively um so we'll see what happens. Uh, again, like I said, I feel like the, the team's going to be better on paper than last year. Um, but it, there's a lot of unknowns as far as who's going to go out there and contribute health wise. You know, that's the biggest thing. You got to go out there and stay healthy for 162. And uh, that's that's kind of the crystal ball. You can never really see into the future and see what happens. How was fantasy camp when you went down there? I saw you saw Steve and a bunch of the guys I know. Yeah, Steve and I took home a championship. I was down there for three weeks, and the the first week that uh, Steve and I that Steve and I were together, uh, we we won a championship. It's always great seeing him. He's he's a riot. I learned so much from him when I was at Ness, and we worked together. He's he's just really good at his job. makes makes everything flow a lot better. Makes everybody that he works with that much better as well. And uh, and I always appreciated that. Uh, but yeah, it's always a blast. You're down there. You're you're back in uniform. You're getting to see team teammates that you played with. Um, it, it's like a family reunion every year in January down in Florida. You're getting out of the cold weather. You're seeing these guys that you play with, good friends, and uh, you really can't beat it. You can't beat it. So again, yeah, three weeks down there, and uh, I was ready to get back up though. You know, I I, I missed my family, missed the kids. I didn't hug them for three weeks, which could be very difficult if if you're a dad. <laughs> Now, Yuk, was he down there? Yuk was not down there. I've I've asked him about fantasy camp, and I'm going to keep plugging away. I'm going to do everything I can to get him down there. Same thing with Will Middlebrooks. I believe Will might be coming next year. I'm going to I'm going to try to recruit him like other players are recruiting free agents. I'm trying to get him down there to to help us out as well. I know everybody that comes down as far as coach uh, always has a blast. And if anybody doesn't know on, the, on that's listening to our show later on today, who Will Middlebrooks is. He won the World Series, but his wife was the sideline reporter before Jamal Webster was Jenny Dell was the Boston Red Sox. So if anybody's not familiar, they might know Will Meadowbrook, but they're not familiar who his wife is. It's Jenny Dell. Yeah, and, and Will started with Nesson last year as well. Did a great job during the pre- and post-game show. I know he's going to get some reps in the booth this year, this year with OB. Uh, so, again, he's another guy that, that does a great, a great job prepping preparing he knows his stuff and and he's been working for i believe cbs for a number of years now too so it's been a pretty easy transition for him i always look forward to working with him because it's a we've got the hitter pitcher combination we can kind of bounce ideas off each other so uh yeah anytime you have a guy like that that works that hard and, and is good at his job you always want him in the mix and also what's his um name will be taken over for dennis kevin Euclid. yeah kevin kevin we go way back we were rookies together back in 04 uh and we, we 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 came up and uh we always had that that bond where we were the young guys and uh he did an outstanding job last year in the booth he's a natural at it and again you can't say enough about the guy's work ethic 
He goes out there. He knows what he's talking about because he does the he does his due diligence as far as preparing. And uh, and he's got that thing, right, that that you thing that you just can't put your finger on. Right. Just people love him. Uh, I know why I can see why anytime he was he was up at, at bat. Everybody thought, you know, in 04, people thought they were booing, but they were yelling you. So uh, he's an icon. He's an iconic player for the Red Sox for a long time. And uh, the transition into the booth was uh, was really great. And for a, for one year, he, he played a little bit, but he was injured. He played for my boys because he was supposed to stay with you guys. But then Bobby Valentine and him locked horns. That's what a lot of my friends said. And if it wasn't for Bobby Valentine, he would have retired with you guys, kind of like David Ortiz. Sure. Yeah, again, it, it's, it's the crystal ball thing again. You never know where, where someone's career is going to go and what trajectory placed him on certain paths. But, uh, yeah, he had a nice long career with a few different organizations. I think he mixed in the White Sox as well as the Yankees and, and the Red Sox. And, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, again – He's an icon, right? Kevin Euclid. So, uh, and he's going to continue to be because of the great job he's doing in the booth. And also Johnny Damon. He was up there at the, with the gambling thing not that long ago when they opened up. Oh, was he really? I, I didn't yeah. see that. I, I haven't seen Johnny in quite a bit. I know uh, I posted something on Twitter not too long ago back from, I want to say 2005, where it was me, Euke, Bronson Arroyo, and Johnny Damon were on stage uh somewhere somewhere in 2005 singing i think it was a it was bronson's cd release party we were singing dirty water together and i posted that and i think he commented uh good times though good times we actually sang on uh the dropkick murphy's tessie as well me bronson and johnny sang on that i'm not sure if they had us turned up loud enough to hear us but uh, it was still a good time getting in the studio with the band and and singing that song we had no idea at the time they were going to be playing that after the majority of red sox wins at fenway park just think thought it was a good time and then it it turned into this thing just snowballed into this huge hit now was was it last year or was it a couple of years ago before the pandemic you had your reunion was from the 2004 team and most of the guys the, the, the came manny came manny looked manny looked different he had it's he, he cut his hair yeah yeah i mean we're, we're all getting older right yeah, yeah i was yeah. 24 i was 24 back in 2004 and i'm I'm 43 right now. So uh, I think we all look a little bit different than we did back then. Um, yeah, I know the 10 year reunion was fun. I got to see a lot of the players and it was awesome to, to, to be a part of that. And next year, 2024, I'm sure the Red Sox are going to be doing something special for the ball club. Uh, I mean, everybody's around and, and, and looking forward to, again, seeing old teammates and getting back to Fenway Park and being part of those festivities, whatever they they are. I know there's a couple of guys that, at least one guy I read in my guide each year. I get, I look, I like looking at the names in back. It says Lenny and it says when you played. There was one guy you played with, and then he played for the Blue Jays. He died, and I forget how many years ago he died, but I can't think of his name. But he was on that old five team. No kidding. Yeah, I, I'd have to look that up. I haven't heard anything about that, so that's uh, that's unfortunate. He died uh, a long time ago, before the virus. I forget how many years ago he died. No kidding. Yeah, I'd have to look that up. I'm drawing a blank right now. You said he was on the 05 team. Yeah, I believe he was on 05, and I believe he was played with you. I'll have okay. to send you his name later. Yeah, please do. Please do. I, I wasn't aware. So um, do you still get to talk to Terry Francona? I haven't talked to Tito in quite quite some time. Um, I'm glad that he's healthy again. I know he had, he had a couple scares last year, and, and DeMarlo Hale, Ended up uh, taking over the helm for a little bit. Who's also uh, a great manager, great coach, and great guy, great individual. Um, but it's also it, it's great to see Tito out there and uh, having fun on the moped out there in Cleveland, like he does. And uh, <laughs> he, he was such a great manager. My first manager in the big leagues. I always appreciated the way he handled me as a rookie. Kind of showed me the ropes and uh, kept me on the right path as as well as he could. Um, but yeah, I know uh, Victor Rodriguez is out there too. He's one of the hitting coaches, and who's just another outstanding in individual. Bunch of former Red Sox coaches out there in Cleveland getting it done. Gotta love it. And then you have Carl. I can't think of his name. He was under I'm um, John Henry. He's the pitching coach over over there, and 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 with the Guardians. Oh no, kid. Yeah, Carl so I guess Willis, a, I believe. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about him. I I never had him as a coach, uh, but you're absolutely correct. He's over there as well. Um, uh, I know Brad Mills used to be over there too. He's he's retired now, but he he followed Tito over there too, and just another great great guy. 
So he must have retired after this year because he was there this year. Was he Brad Mills? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. I'd have to check when exactly he retired, but I know he's, uh, I, I'm pretty sure he's done coaching now. I'm, I'm still not happy with the uh, 13 years ago. It'd be, four, it'd be, four, it'd be 14 years in October. We haven't won the World Series and you retired 14 years ago. We haven't won it since then because of the Astros. Yeah, you know, it just shows you how special it is to be able to not only get there, but to pull it off. I mean, the Red Sox had an 86-year gap, you know, until 2004. So, uh, that, for me and a lot of people, that was a special year, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I tell this story all the time, but when we were on the duck boats, three and a half, four million people in the streets just, just celebrating. And I remember on the duck boat where it hit me that I, oh, this is really special, right? When people were holding up pictures of family members, they would they would run out to the, to the parade. Before they leave the house, they grab pictures off the mantle of grandpa that wasn't able to see this mm -hmm. or, or just people that were close to them that hung around for a long, long time. 86 years is a lifetime. So there's a lot of people that were, that were hoping and praying and had their fingers crossed that the Red Sox could get this done. And finally, after 86 years, it was... Uh, they were able to do it. We were able to do it. And uh, I'll, I'll never take that for granted. The small part that I played being in that clubhouse. And you had a couple of guys that ended up on that World Series team that ended up with the Yankees. Alan Embry the next year. Mark Bellhorn. Mike Myers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was I, I, I was almost part of the 07 team as well. I was in spring training. I got there a week or two early. I was working out, playing catch, throwing. And then uh, right before spring training started, I got back to my my place where I was renting, and uh, I had a voicemail saying, "Listen, you were you were put on waivers. Uh, Oakland Athletics picked you up, so you're on the next flight out. You're gonna have to ship your car. It's a a big, basically a big suitcase with all my stuff in it." And uh, I was I was a member of the Oakland A's uh, like a few days later. Now your manager for the Oakland Athletics, I believe he's one of the bench coaches for the Dodgers now. Is it Bob Guerin? Yeah, I believe Bob, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, Bob Garen was there, and uh, yeah, that was uh, you know, it, it was it was a different experience. You know, you pitch in Fenway Park, thirty six plus thousand people, just uh, screaming their heads off every night. It's a playoff atmosphere, and you go to Oakland, and the Coliseum's so big; it holds what eighty thousand people. So if you've got twenty twenty five thousand people in that big bowl, it only looks like it's about five, right? Uh, I always appreciated the fans because you saw the same faces over and over again. Um, I got a great opportunity there. I made the most starts of my career in 07. Uh, I, I think I started 20 games. I had 15 relief appearances the same year. Two of them, I went in like the third inning and finished the games. I threw six plus innings. So uh, for me to go out there and be able to have that opportunity given to me and, and, and run with it was always special. And who was your manager in 09 with the Royals? Oh, I'm drawing a blank right now. He wasn't there for very long. I, uh, I've got a baseball rep there. I have to. What? You know, you caught me. I got. I got to look at the baseball up there. I was only there for a, for a brief time, so I had to look. But it's good to see Bob Guerin still coaching, even if he's under Dave Roberts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he he's a baseball lifer. He played in the Yankee organization as a minor leaguer prior to to coaching and. Uh, now, again, when, when you play the game that long and you coach, you want to do everything you can to stick in. Not everybody can be a coach or stay in the game. And I'm doing my best to do it as a broadcaster, as an analyst on Nesson. So it's uh, for me, it's uh, it's special to be able to talk about baseball, even though I can't play it anymore. Now, and I do lessons be, as well. Now, will you be doing a um, any broadcasting like you was OB in the booth this year? I don't know. I don't know. There's a few times in the past where I would be, driving in to do the to do the pre and post game and uh they would say okay now you're doing the booth you know something happened where i had to substitute and kind of get in and uh for me living in rhode island not too terribly far from fenway park they always have the option if something goes down or someone can't make it if they get sick they can always call me and i'll and i'll be there so that's uh, that's always an option on their end and uh but for me right now the sweet spot is the pre and post game show an hour before the game we go on talk baseball when the game ends, we go on for another hour and, and talk ball. And uh, it's fun. It's a great time. And, again, I can't play the game anymore, but I can teach it to little kids like I do all the time. I've got four or five later today, this afternoon. Or I can talk baseball, talk Red Sox baseball on Nesson uh, to, to all the Red Sox nation out there in New England. How's your kids doing? 
They're great. They're great. They're 10, 8, 6, and almost 4. Uh, three of them are in school now. Uh, so, yeah, they're getting big. They're getting older. Yeah. And your, your wife's still doing the um ins- and, and the real estate stuff. She, yep, she's doing that. She stays busy. She likes to go out and run. And uh, she's very athletic. So, you know, that's kind of her thing, going out there and running. And when she can, she'll get to the Y and swim as well. But, yeah. So what do you have to think about the, this version of the 2023 team compared to past years? If you had to think about the team right now, because like I said, I couldn't believe I thought last winter in 2021 and 2022, I thought it'd be the Yankees, Red Sox, Blue Jays and Rays all fighting for first place. I never thought the Red Sox would be so down in the tunnel there. And I never thought that the Orioles would be better than you guys. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, again, it was a tough season. And uh, a lot of it for me had to do with him not able to kind of stay healthy. When you're not healthy, you're not able to go out there and be consistent, whether it's it's outings on the mound or putting at bats during the season. So uh, first and foremost, I feel like if they can stay healthy, they're going to go out there and be able to stay consistent. When you're consistent, you go out there and win ball games. Um, like in, in June last year, they were 20 and six. I don't expect them to go 20 and six every month, right? But you don't want six and 20 either, which is no. <laughs> which is close to the turnaround the month after and the month before just, it wasn't good. But uh, again, I, I think the Red Sox this year have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because of last year, and because people are already starting to count them out. Anytime you've got a fire burning and a chip on your shoulder that, that always, for me, it always spells good things in the future, right? Cause when you start to take things for granted, you feel like you're going to be number one. Then you start to get lackadaisical. You don't have, you don't put in the work. Uh, and, and they're not there right now. They're putting in the work. They feel like they have something to prove, and uh, which makes me excited to watch these games and cover these games because uh, there's a little bit of a fire in there, and they have to prove everything. You still have to get me in. You said you wanted to get me in sometime to watch you guys and get to, get to meet some of the guys at, in the studio. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'll run it by Nesson, and we can maybe coordinate something. But uh, now you're not going to be wearing a Yankee jersey or anything no, like that. I, don't, are you, I, don't, I wear my suit and tie. <laughs> okay. You're very professional. Very yeah. professional. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll see what we can do. We see, we'll see. we see. I like the time when Dennis showed up a while ago back. I heard about that. And he had his athletic jersey on. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah. yeah, yeah he's yeah, a I funny guy. Him. He's a funny guy. And I'll tell you what, um, uh, 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 good for him for enjoying retirement. Hopefully he's out there in, in sunny California doing his thing. And, uh, he put in a long time in the booth. He was very good at what he did. And uh, I feel like the guys that are coming in are going to be themselves. You don't have to try to be Dennis Eckersley or Jerry Remy. They were themselves. They were unique individuals, and that's what showed on TV. And I feel like Uke and and, and Merloni and, and Middlebrooks are going to bring their own thing to the table as well. The last time you and I talked, Jerry Remy was still alive. You, and RIP Remy. And I remember Rest in he peace, got his, yeah. Got his World Series ring. In 05, it was the day after opening day. The owners went up to John Henry and Larry Luke and, and um Tom Warner. They went up there and gave it to Don, who's over in San Diego now, and also Jerry. So it's it's kind of a different look. Hey, Lenny, I need to get going because I have 924 remaining. Thank you for coming okay. on. Maybe we'll, we'll get you back in a couple more years. Maybe there'll be another World Series ring to add. Thanks for answering Thanks. my questions. Fingers crossed for another World yeah. Series. I got two more kids that need rings, so let's yeah, do yeah. this. Come on. Hey, c- come <laughs> over to New York. We, we, maybe you'll get rings over there. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm true blue Red Sox. That that's it. That's it, man. All right. <laughs> Thank you for everybody watching, Lenny. Have a great rest of your Monday. Tell your kids and your wife I say hi and enjoy your season when it starts up. It doesn't. The pitchers and catchers report on the fifteenth. Full squad work. Full squad workouts. And I yeah. hope everybody has a great rest of your Monday. Lenny, thanks for coming on. We'll get you back on in a couple more years. Thanks, Carl. Have a great day. Have a good day. You too. Bye.